Keir Starmer took a few hours to break his silence after Labour's catastrophic defeat in Hartlepool was announced. However, he clearly didn't spend that time preparing anything concrete to say. Here he is looking pretty irritated and saying nothing of substance on the BBC. This is not a question of left or right. It's a question of whether we're facing the country. We have changed as a party, but we've not made a strong enough case to the country. We've lost that connection, that trust, and I intend to rebuild that and do whatever is necessary to rebuild that trust. But what does change mean in, say, policy terms? It means stopping as a party, quarrelling amongst ourselves, looking internally and facing the country and setting out that bold vision for a better Britain and changing the things that that need changing. What is that that vision? That is the change that I will bring about. Le McCluskey, United General Secretary, says people don't know what you stand for. What is that vision? Our vision is of a country that ends the injustice and inequality that millions of people face every day. But fundamentally, we have to show that we are facing the country, that we've learnt the lessons of this bitterly disappointing set of results. You say you take personal responsibility for the results. Are you up to the job of Labour Party leader? Yes, and I intend not only to take responsibility for the results, but to take responsibility for fixing things. Um, And I will set out what change is needed over the next few days, but I'm absolutely clear in my mind and absolutely determined to do whatever is necessary uh, to fix things and to make sure we can make that case to the country in a compelling way. What are you going to change over the next few days? What are you referring to? I will set out what we need to do to reconnect the Labour Party to the voters that have cast their verdict on us last night, particularly in places like Hartlepool. We have changed as a party. We have changed as a party, but we need to go further and we need to set out that strong case to the country. We have not done that. So you're going to set out a new policy agenda, is that what you're saying? I am going to set out a strong case to the country, learn the lessons uh, of, of the elections that have come in so far, Um, and accept that we must reconnect and rebuild trust with working people, particularly in places like Hartlepool. Can you give us any indication of what it is you're going to... Well, I'm not going to set out a policy agenda uh, in this interview, but I'm going to uh, set out how we reconnect and rebuild that trust. He's like a parody of himself, like a parody of a politician who believes in absolutely nothing. So we say, we're going to change. He's asked, what does change mean? Oh, we're going to stop squabbling. We're going to set out a bold vision. Well, what is that bold vision? Our vision is to face the country. We're going to face the country and stop talking about ourselves. So what are you going to, what are you going to do? What are you going to change? Well, I'll reconnect with the voters we lost. But how? I mean, what, what, how are you going to appeal to them? I'll look outwards instead of looking inwards, twirling, twirling all the time. I mean, it's, it's embarrassing. She says, well, do you have any policies? Well, I'm not going to tell, not going to tell you my policies on the television. Why would I tell you my policies here on the television? That would be a ridiculous thing to do. I mean, Aaron, that was almost like awkward to watch, wasn't it? Well, did you watch the end of it? I mean, we don't have the end of the clip, but basically she's kind of like, oh, we're obviously not going anywhere. She, you know, she audibly says this and she's just like, should we just finish there? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she's just like, this guy's a clown. And the BBC, A, they, they, they are quite deferential to politicians. Even with Jeremy Corbyn, you wouldn't hear that on air, really. And it's, it's, a, it's a night of the realm. You know, they're meant to be like, we are not worthy. And she's just like, you're, you're clearly an idiot. And also, where, he, where this was taking place, Michael, Keir Starmer, and by the way, being a human rights lawyer, perfectly fine thing, living in London, perfectly fine thing, but th- these are the sort of political cliches. Keir Starmer, Remainer, Sir, Establishment, London, human rights lawyer, lives in Zone 1, completely out of touch with the rest of the country. Where does he do the interview? In the House of Parliament. What's behind him? Some, some, some parliamentary, you know... Uh, some folios of various parliamentary nonsense and you know data and whatnot. What? Where, where's Boris Johnson? Boris Johnson is in Hartlepool next to a ship, hundreds of years old, talking to people, thumbs up, face mask on. Who's more relatable, Michael? Keir Starmer has no policy, no idea, no organisational competence. And, and worst of all, I think, actually, in a, in a, particularly in a, we, we do live in an era of populism. I'm sorry for the hashtag FBPE crowd. You don't want to admit that, but we are. He is so unlikable. I've said this repeatedly. Nobody watches that guy and thinks, you know what? I'm really rooting for him. And people might not, some people might not look like Corbyn. A lot of people had that feeling with Jeremy Corbyn. I'm really rooting for him. Yeah, go on. 
At least he knows what he believes in. Nobody can say this about Keir Starmer. He's a non-entity who is who is so dislikable immediately. And I think the fact that he was doing that interview in what was, you know, the aesthetics of it were just so politically distant from what was happening in Hartlepool, that, that dissonance between Boris Johnson and Keir Starmer embodied so much for me. And it just shows, actually, Keir Starmer, the grown-ups are back in charge. Well, you know what? A media professional wouldn't be doing that interview there. So not only is Keir Starmer not good enough, but nor are the people around him. He's been Labour leader for a year, and presumably he wanted to be Labour leader for a while before he stood to be Labour leader. We know it was a very well-prepared leadership campaign. Yet any time he, or indeed anyone else in the party, is asked, what's your vision? Very basic question, actually, for a politician. It's not, it's not a question really intended to catch people out, or it shouldn't be. He looks terrified. Our vision is to look out to the country. Our vision is to change the party. I mean, that's these are these are like subheadings. It's like subheadings of a strategy you could have, but they still haven't filled in the box. You know, it's uh, to be in that job for over a year and not have anything to say to that question. I just find it, you know, difficult to fathom. It just seems it, it just seems like gross negligence, gross incompetence from people who are presumably on quite good salaries. I mean, I suppose maybe you can't come up with a vision if you don't believe in anything. I, I suppose that's probably the, the easiest explanation for what's going on here. They're asking Starmer, what do you believe in? He says, I believe in having values. I believe in believing things. I believe in uh, showing the party that I, showing the country that I believe in something. It's like, well, what do you believe? It's like, I'm not telling you that. I'm not, not giving that away. People with values, if you have values, it's about being honest. How, how do I know you're honest? It's because you act with honesty, you know, or, or, or you're generous. You, 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 there are actions that you express which are they distill the, the idea of you know generosity. Keir Starmer's like, I have values. I am electable, and you see this nonsense coming out by the way from Steve Reed, West Street, and all sorts of people. We've become more electable. The, the electorate just don't know it yet. You know, you've got this complete detachment from these words and what they actually mean. This is like political Dadaism. This is like if Pablo Picasso was trying to create a politician. You know, it's like the Guernica. One horse's head going this way and that going this way, and the whole thing's just a complete mess. You know, it's it's, it's non-representational. None of it's actually meant to make any sense. It's not meant to look like the real world. That's what Keir Starmer interviews increasingly look like. You, you mentioned um, Boris Johnson choosing a, a better spot for his um, you know, national broadcast than Keir Starmer. We do have that um, for you, so let's take a look. This is Boris Johnson in Hartlepool with the town's new Tory MP, Jill Mortimer. Uh, a massive thank you uh, to, first of all, to the people of Hartlepool for placing their confidence in uh, us, in the Conservatives. I will congratulate Jill on a fantastic campaign. I think that she's uh, a, a, been a wonderful candidate and fought uh, very, very hard for, for every vote. And I think she'll be a wonderful MP. And for me, what this means is that uh, I think that it's a, it's a mandate for us to continue to, to deliver. Uh, for not just for the people of Hartlepool, not just for the people of the of the northeast, but across the whole of the of the country. And I think if there's a lesson out of this whole election campaign, the whole election, local election campaign across the whole of the UK, uh, it's that the public want politicians to get on uh, with focusing on on their needs and their priorities. So coming through the pandemic uh, and making sure that we then build back better and we. You can see some of the evidence of economic uh, confidence that uh, the Bank of England's been talking about, the, the prospect of a really strong uh, rebound in the second half of the year. I think people want us to focus on that. And uh, I think that here in Hartlepool, uh, clearly people were, uh, this is a place that voted for Brexit uh, and we got Brexit done. And then we're able to do other things thanks to that. As Aaron said, very importantly, he didn't do that speech from Parliament. He went to Hartlepool. He's doing it in front of like a historic ship. There's sort of some some narrative there. You can hear the seagulls. It just seems less miserable. Obviously, it's easier when you've won to do that TV interview than it is if you've lost. But nonetheless, the thing Boris Johnson didn't say is, ah, oh, yes, the reason we won is because we're looking outwards. The reason we won is because we have values. The reason we won is because we have a vision. No, he actually he actually filled out the blanks. So he said, people liked it when, when things are delivered, like we delivered Brexit, like we got people through the pandemic. Now we've got free ports in Hartlepool. I mean, free ports are a terrible idea, by the way, but at least you're you're naming something. You're saying something. There was some content there. And Keir Starmer has nothing in response to that. I mean, why would you vote for the guy who's telling you I have values than the person who's saying I've actually done these things? Not I've done things, I've done these things. It's concrete, it's real. You feel like the guy 
is not actually terrified when he's speaking to a camera. By the way, compare how Keir Starmer has received in the you know, Prime Minister's questions. Which, by the way, nobody watches. Nobody watches Prime Minister's questions. Very interesting. Yep, you can land a blow. It might, it, every six months, it might get on the six sort of news. Great. But on an everyday basis, granular detail. Nobody cares. Keir Starmer is there. People, the hashtags or the, or the second referendum people. Fantastic. He, this is forensic. People seem to think that he said things which mean Boris Johnson is going to go to prison. He's going to resign. I don't know. You know, this kind of strange. They think that politics is like a, tr a true crime podcast. Um, although we're going to get some sort of Robert Mueller figure to arrest, you know, Boris Johnson, wheel him off to, you know, Pentonville prison. That's not going to happen, by the way. This is the reality. People haven't got huge asks from politicians. They want you to solve, that you want them to solve problems, and they don't want you to create any new ones. That's it. And they saw Brexit as a problem. You might disagree with that, but they thought Britain being in the EU was a problem. Enough people had thought that was a problem. There was a referendum. It became a wedge issue. Boris Johnson appears. But again, we can have that conversation. Maybe there's going to be major implications going forward. But right now, it looks like the Tories have they've solved that problem. The vaccines looks like they solved that problem. Furlough looks like they solved that problem. Now, of course, it's easier for governments to to to, to pitch themselves that there are many things they haven't solved. 120,000 people have died, and people are saying, "Well, you know, Boris Johnson, he's associated with getting things done." Yes, because Labour don't talk about the things he hasn't done. Of course. Keir Starmer is the biggest asset to Boris Johnson and the Tories right now. I said this the day that Jeremy Corbyn was suspended from the Labour Party. Keir Starmer is, this guy is like the wingman for Boris Johnson in 2021.